taking a quick look at the basic exponential function, which has been explained elsewhere, so I'll explain fairly quickly. Um, we have the function y equals 2 to the x. That's your basic exponential function. When x is negative 2, y is 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 fourth. When x equals negative 1, y is 1 half. When x equals negative 1 half, y is, you don't know. You can't calculate it. You use a calculator to approximate it, but we're not doing that. So that point is out of the domain. Okay? 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 half, not in our domain because we can't calculate it exactly. Okay, when x is 1, we get 2 because 2 to the 1 is 2 and 2 to the second is 4. So, our domain consists of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Our range is the set of y values, and that would be the set 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, 4. The graph, well here we have our x-axis and our y-axis. <coughs> okay, I've got x values from negative 2 to 2. I subdivide the interval from 0 to 2 to locate 1. And I could subdivide the interval from 0 to 1 to locate 1 half, even though we don't have a calculated point for that. And then I do the same on the other side of the axis. I subdivide this interval to get 1, and I get negative 1 half. Then I plot my points. Well, I better have a y scale. So, let's say 2 units is about that far, so 4 would be up about here. If I wanted to make the graph with equal x and y scales. And when you first do the graphs, it's kind of a good idea to do that so you get an idea of just how they're stretched out and shaped and so forth. Anyhow, I divide that interval in half. I divide this interval in half. I divide this interval in half. And I locate my points. Negative 2, 1 fourth. Well, okay, here's 1. I'm going to need y equals 1 fourth. I'm also going to need y equals 1 half. So I'm going to divide the interval from 0 to 1 in half. And then I'm going to divide that interval in half. And now I've got 1 half and 1 fourth. Um, so there's 1 half, 1 fourth. I'm not sure I did that very well. Half is a little bit high, but it'll be OK. OK, so I plot my points. Negative 2, 1 fourth gives me a point about here. Negative 1, 1 half gives me a point about here. 0, 1 is about here. 1, 2, and 2, 4. Well, 1, 2 is going to be about here. And 2, 4 will be above 2, cross and 4. I think maybe about here. Okay, there's my graph. There's the domain, there's the range. Now, I can do what I call an extended basic function by sketching a smooth curve through these points. And we don't go beyond the point for the extended function. There's the end of it. On left to right, there's the beginning. Okay, this is the extended basic exponential function. Its domain and I used the wrong symbol there because made that symbol before today, and that's what my hand wanted to do. I have to see if I can keep that thing in line. Okay, the domain is going to be just the interval, closed interval, from negative 2 to 2. Because, well, here it is. Here's the closed interval from negative 2 to 2.
This depicts the set of x values that correspond to this curve. That's your domain. The range is what? Well, the y values go from one fourth to four. And since this is a continuous curve, there are no gaps in y values. Whatever y value you want between here and here, you can find a point on the graph with that y value. So the range will be detected here. And the range goes from 1 fourth and 4, including both 1 fourth and 4. So we have a closed interval. That's the domain and the range of the extended basic function. The complete basic exponential function continues on. So um, I haven't done a piece of white chalk, but I don't know where it went, but we go. Okay, we didn't do a good job of maintaining the direction of that line at perspective here. Um, but you can think about it. If I was to go to negative 3, I would have 2 to the negative 3, which would be 1 eighth. Okay, so that we're going to get twice as close to the x-axis if we just go to here. And every time we go over another unit, it turns out we get twice as close. Because look at this. We're at 4, we move one unit in this direction, we're twice as close to the x-axis. We move another unit in the x-direction, we're twice as close to the x-axis. Another unit in the x direction, we're twice as close, twice as close, we're going to be twice as close again, and we're going to continue getting twice as close. So that this graph is going to pretty rapidly almost what's well, going to appear to merge with the x axis. It never will actually merge, but it's going to appear to emerge, to, to merge. Um, because there's no limit to how close it can get, but it's never going to be zero. No matter what negative number you put in here, you never get zero. So, this is the extended basic function, and it asymptotic to the x-axis for negative values. The positive values graph gets almost vertical quickly but it's never vertical. Okay, so it increases very rapidly. Um, for the complete basic function, then of all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Range, so of what? Well, 2 to the x can't ever be negative. 1 over 2 to a power, 2 to any power is positive. So if you divide 1 by 2 to a power, it's got to be positive. It obviously gets very big. There's no limit to how big it can get because the bigger number you put into, uh, the bigger number you substitute for x, the bigger the result you're going to get. There's no limit to how big. Uh, and the asymptote to the x-axis means you can have any value all the way down to zero, but never reaching zero. Meaning that the range goes from zero to infinity does not include zero. So we use the open parenthesis rather than the closed bracket. So there is the basic exponential function.